Hey, this is Angela with this week's Living the Chef. So let's just get right to it and talk about the white elephant in the room. <laughs> and um, not even quite the white elephant because it's pretty easily something that everyone's talking about. And you see it everywhere right now, which is this whole, you know, upcoming a month away now. The um, December 21st portal, the whole end of the Mayan calendar and all that kind of stuff. And you know, it's really funny because I think a year ago, I think it was a year ago when I actually did a, a, another webcast about this. Because if you actually, many many have said that if you actually compare calendar to calendar, the actual end of the Mayan ca uh, calendar was last October in like 2011 because of the differences and how we had the calendar set up. Anyway, beyond that, um, I am getting more and more questions from different people that I know, clients and others that I, you know, meet online, all that kind of stuff. Friends, family, whatever. On, well, what do you think? What do you think is going to happen? Do you think it's going to happen? Um, what do you think? Excuse me. What do you think is coming up? What do you think? What do you think? What do you think? What do you think? Have you seen anything? You know, you don't talk about this. Do you see, you know, visions about this? And so, um... I'll come back to this. Yes, I have seen. I have had plenty of visions, and um, but I don't talk about them very much because I don't think they help us in any way, shape, or form. And and there's so many right now because it's like sort of like speeding up this momentum on that whole December 21st thing. Like that's the big date. And there's all the speculation as to what will happen, what's going to happen, what's going to happen beyond that. There are many things that are coming out right now, but oh, it's the dawning of the age of this. It's this is going to happen. Then we're going to have like you know five, six, seven, ten, twelve catastrophes or cataclysms on the planet, and all of this. It all depends on who you talk to, right? So because of that, it's sort of this freneticism that's going on, and many are starting to get worried, and they're starting to. You know, spend all this inordinate amount of time and energy on worrying about, well, what's going to happen? Do I need to have a survival a survival backpack? Do I need to have, like, you know, a fallout room? <laughs> Do I need to um, start praying? I don't know. There's so many different ways that people are, are starting, their egos are starting to take over. And this is exactly part of why I don't talk about this. Because, number one, again... There, I've said this so many times in different ways, but there's no switch. There's like no, going to be no switch where it's like one minute we're just business as usual, and the next minute we're in a completely different world. It's it's just not that immediate in terms of like you know our what we consider timely. Now, granted that this is happening over a number of years, and um, you know my my understanding was a majority of it would happen over five to ten years, and then you know residual beyond that because of just the, the rate of our choices and evolution, all that kind of stuff. So, and you're asking me, now you're going to ask, what, what do you mean? Wait, what are you talking about? So we are changing. Ch energetically, we're changing. I, I, energetically, we, we're changing. I've talked about this in all of these webcasts that I do. And that's part of what this whole living the shift thing is about, is on how to live the shift, how to live in a new paradigm, how to live in a completely different mindset actually heart set is truly what we're working at is working from a heart set instead of a mindset and what that means for us individually well so this does translate and I was getting nudged and over this past week and I just had such a plethora of all of these emails that came in to me from from people I know saying well I saw this and what do you think of this and I saw this prediction what do you think of this so let's go back to the basics the real big picture of this whole thing is this. It is time to let things that don't serve us fall away. Things that don't serve us in the highest and best way need to fall away, and they will. And we have a volunteered to be on here physically incarnate on Earth during this time of shifting while um, Earth is sort of rebirthing herself, you know, what I call that Earth 2.0 thing. And you know what? Um, we're going to go with her whether we want to or not. So here's the thing. Well, we really do. We agreed to it. There's nothing that we don't want to do. But I mean what our ego doesn't want to do. Whether we um, choose to do it in an easy, graceful way or with trauma, drama, and illness, that's really up to us, every single one of us. So that's the theme. Letting go of that which doesn't serve us in the highest and best way. Now here's, here's, here's the biggest thing about that. How many of us have had 
our higher selves talking to us. Many, many have had their higher selves talking and the voices have been coming through and the ego is going, what, are you crazy? We can't do that. We can't pick up and move. We've always lived here. I can't leave this relationship because it's too comfortable. It's comfortable, like why would I want to leave it? I can't leave this job because it's comfortable because I've always been here and it you know, pays the bills and whatever. And yeah, my heart would love to do something, but this is okay. You know, and I talked about the okay thing last week. But so all of this stuff, and I talked about the shifting and the changing. So it's going to become more and more apparent as we go. And so the what I call the prediction chatter is going to get more and more crazy as we get closer to December 21st and probably well into next year. Um, and I don't talk about these kind of things. I don't talk about visions of what I've seen for, for several reasons. One is there are so many factors in creating and doing predictions okay one is um, seeing things is not when we see something and a vision it's not that it would be wrong if you didn't see it um, actually materialize here but there are many things number one every action that we have every day affects all of our timelines in some way shape or form so something that I see right now can change an hour from now um, and and yes, we can look at it as like the definite, like what the end all be all is. But when we do that, when we get to that point of being able to see that, many times we don't have the context. And things are changing so rapidly now that uh, something that I've been shown or says somebody who has seen these visions or whatever um, has been shown, looks at something and um, will probably have it out of context because we don't have the context of how it applies because it hasn't changed the rest of everything around it uh, of, of whatever that event is hasn't changed to prepare for it yet so what happens is if we said something out of context now this is what the equivalent is of this if somebody got into it like walked into a time capsule walked into a time machine from like uh, 1920 right and and it came here today to 2012 don't you think that a lot of the stuff they saw would scare them. Looking at computers and the internet and TVs and Blu-rays and oh, like our 3D, you know, TVs and all of this stuff, wireless, you know, just our mobile phones and all all those things that we take for granted were totally out of context, say in 1920. And so it would frighten some people. It would frighten a lot of people because they would be like, well. You know, where's that coming from and how is it, you know, and then, and then there would be sometimes this paranoia gets in Well, there are implants in here and there's this and that and everything else. Okay. So things are condensing and accelerating so quickly now and changing so quickly right now. That would probably be the equivalent from 1920 to now, almost to walking into a time capsule from now to 2015. Seriously, seriously. That's how fast things are moving and changing. So if I said, this is something I've seen, and this has already happened, like I've seen some stuff, like, like I don't know, two three, two, three years ago, that were come to pass, that did come to pass this year. And it was funny that back then I had no idea what the context that would be, and it really was sort of disturbing at the time. And then it happens this year, and I was like, oh, okay, well that makes sense. Well, that's even happening faster and faster. So. The ego wants to grasp onto it. When somebody says, well, this is what's going to happen, or these things are going to happen, there's no context that's given around it. And so the ego starts to panic. And when the ego starts to panic, we stop feeling in our hearts. We stop listening to the higher self because all this chatter starts going on in our head. And I get these questions all the time. What should I do? How should I do? So how should I prepare? And what I always say is clear the chatter, you know? Work on yourself. Be the best you can be today. Do what your heart wants to do. Follow your heart. And um, be in your truth 100%. Do the best you can be. Clear yourself. Clear the things that limit you and block you and hold you back. And be a beacon of light. That is the best that every single one of us can do. And that's how we help each other. Because you know what? And then the next question is, well, what if, what if, because then there's all this talk about the ascension to another dimension and all this kind of stuff. So then I get the next question. Well, what if I do the work, but nobody else does or not enough people do? And I'm always like, well, it doesn't matter because here's the thing. You will experience it differently. The Buddhists call it um, detached benevolence. I'm being able to see something 
without getting um, emotionally, egoically involved in it and, and accepting things for how they are and how they go. And the more you become that way, the more you can see every event for what it is and you can see how it is, has manifested and why and what the purpose was. And then, it, then as we're clear with that detached benevolence, we can then say, this is how it served us. This is how we can move forward from this. And this is how we can release, relief the, relieve this, excuse me, and, um, and flow forward. So, and the key is this, we are all in this and we have the choice on how it affects us, how what goes on and all the changes that happen and whatever happens, whether it is what people call cataclysms, whether it is what, um, you know, big shifts in our poles and all this kind of stuff, we will adapt in the way we need to adapt to complete the cycle. And yes, many people are transitioning out, many souls are transitioning out, that is their choice to transition out. It is all our choices on where we are, when we are, and how we do it. So, we can choose to try to ignore it and look the other way because we're afraid of change and we're afraid of the unknown, and the more and more, and this is already happening around us around this world, the more we ignore it, and the more we hold on to the old boxes and the old paradigms because we are afraid to change the way we've done things, the change the way we've always done things. And that re includes everything, including, you know, how we live, where we live, what we eat, um, the relationships we're in, the kind of relationships we're in, how long we're in them, and um, being comfortable versus being driven and being um, happy and blissful. And what's good enough because, you know what, it's the bar has been raised. On that and and it's continuing to raise and I talked about this last time but it is time for us to really step into our divinity again and to remember that and to remember that we are the archangels the ascended masters the angels and the guides that we all have a level of consciousness consciousness there um, at those levels of consciousness and that we are here incarnate for a purpose we are all the divine we are all all of that so, the key is clear the chatter, listen to the higher self, because the higher self is part of the divine and we have access to all of it. We have access to all of that information ourselves. We have access to all of that understanding ourselves. And even, you know, it's funny because there was somebody on um, my Facebook Road to Awakening page, group, uh, group page, that had asked about a dream. And it had to do with, it was a really odd dream too, it was about someone, um, like he had given his eyes to his dog and his dog ate his eyes or something and and he asked does anybody have an idea what this meant and what came in really clearly was what are you using as your seeing eye dog literally right how we do these things in news seeing eye dog what are you using as your seeing eye dog to give away your power who are you depending on and what are you depending on to give you information instead of listening to your higher self and listening to your heart because that is the habit we're breaking through this that is if there's one big really important thing besides of course so there's letting go of that which doesn't serve us and the other thing is remembering that we have all of it inside of us and that all of this is inside of this and you are me you you are me and I am you and there is no difference we can look at this whole universe from all these different perspectives because this whole universe is within us and um, it's a big concept but but we have so many steps to release that the ego, you know, it's been whole, the whole experience of duality and the whole experience of the ego that we're letting go of is that we have to give our power to somebody else. We have to depend on somebody else to give us the answer. We have to look at, you know, all this stuff and say, oh, well, this person said this and this person said this and I don't care if three billion people follow one person. It doesn't mean they're right. It doesn't mean that they see it exactly in, in truth because we all have filters and when we see information that comes in we have to filter it through our own experience so that's why I always come back to when somebody asks me what do you think this I say okay did you ask your higher self is it truth for you I mean there's something that I saw over the weekend that was from somebody who's very well known who is very established and who has done many predictions and talks about a lot of this kind of stuff and I watched it and yet you know what only about half of it felt like truth to me and I don't care how many people watch it, I don't, I don't care how many thousands or millions of people watch it, it only was about half truth to me, and that's really how it rang, and 
And that is really where we need to be. And we don't need to know all of that stuff. We don't need to consciously recall all of that stuff. But when it comes through our different channels, because we are giving ourselves messages in some way, shape, or form. Number, sometimes it's a test to see if we are checking in with our higher selves. Sometimes it's our ego giving us a message back that we were trying to fool ourselves so, because it's more comfortable. Um, sometimes, oh, there are so many different reasons, but you know, but many times we are giving ourselves a message. And the thing is that we're trying, we can glean truth. We can, so of what I watched, the 50%, yeah, well, that, that felt like truth. And so I, I could take that and I understood how that came into me and why that came into me. Um, and I discarded the other 50% because it didn't ring true to me. And we can do that. We're allowed to do that. There's nobody here who has more information than us. There's nobody here that is better than us, who is a better seer, who can um, tap into their, you know, what we call our supernatural abilities, but they're actually just our divine abilities, better than us. We can do all of it. It's just a, rem a matter of remembering. So on that, um, I'm going to let you go. Food for thought. And you know what? Enjoy this month. Enjoy the next month. And you know what? We create our reality. So to create the reality of December 21st, you know what we should do? Let's all create the reality of everyone coming back to their Christed consciousness. Everyone coming back to the remembrance of the illusion and that we have all the divine within us and that we can make this so spectacular and so awesome and amazing and um get to this next level the earth 2.0 with such bliss and grace and ease that you know we'll never look back i i am proposing that's what we do and if we want to put our attention on, on december 21st then let's do it that way on that i'm gonna let you go this is angela have a great week on living the show